Hey Rockstars, Andrew here, and in this tutorial I'm going to walk through how to modify the eLearning Brothers Captivate game templates. Now in this tutorial I'll be using the shootout game, but the same principles and actions and variables are going to apply to any of our games that have separate question slides that you can modify. Okay, so the first step when you open the game is to navigate to slide 1, come over to the properties panel on the right, and select the game options advanced action that is happening on this slide. And this will pop up with uh, several different actions, but there's only going to be four that you're going to need to modify for each game. Now the first one is going to be called number of questions. And what this does is this just sets the number of questions that show up in your game. You can set this anywhere from two questions all the way up to 15 or 20, depending on the game that you're using. To change that, all you do is double click, select the drop down, select literal, don't select variable, and then change the question value and select enter. Now the second variable you're going to want to modify is called add points per question. Now what this does is this just changes the value that each question is worth. Right now it's defaulted to 10 but you can change that anywhere from 0 to however you want and then that will tally throughout the game in the top right corner. Okay the next one is called passing percentage. This one's also self-explanatory. This is the percentage that the user has to get in order to pass the game. Right now it's set to 80, but you can again set that anywhere from 0 to 100. Then there's some action that happens on the back end that will mark the game as complete if they get that percentage. The last one you're going to have to worry about modifying on this is called the SCORM variable. Now if you're going to be running the game in an LMS, you want to set this to 1. Then there's some JavaScript that's happening on the very last slide of the game that grabs the passing percentage and reports that to the LMS and then shows a complete or incomplete depending on whether or not they pass the game. Okay, so that's the first step in modifying this game. And let me jump to slide three right here and kind of tell you what's going on on the button slide of the game. This is a slide that confuses a lot of people because each of the objects that are on this slide are going to be set to display for the rest of project rather than the rest of the slide like Captivate defaults to. So if I select one of these and go to the timing panel in the properties panel on the right, I can see that this is set to display for rest of project. Now what this does is this is going to host the object on slide three, but no matter what slide I go to, those objects are also going to be visible. Now the reason we do this is to cut down on the amount of editing that you have to do and as well as cut down on the amount of time Captivate takes to load and run the game because there's less objects that you have to worry about. Now you actually don't have to modify anything on this slide. I just wanted to show you how that worked. The next slide you'll have to modify is going to be slide four, question one set variables. Now each question in the game, in this particular game, there's 20 different questions and each question has four slides that are associated with it. There's a slide called set variables where you actually set the correct and incorrect answers for that question. The question slide where you modify the question text and then a correct feedback slide and an incorrect feedback slide. So I jump back to the question one set variable slide and I navigate to the properties panel again. I can see that there's an advanced action happening called setup question one. Now this is where I'm going to change the correct answers for this particular question. So I open this up, I can see that there's a bunch of different actions firing on here. Let's walk through each of those. The first one is going to be called multiple response. Now for this particular question, it's set to 1, and if it's set to 1, it's going to change that from a multiple choice to a multiple response, which means the user can select more than one answer option. If you only want one of the answer options to be correct, you'll change this from 1 to 0. And right below that, there's four different actions that are firing. Answer A, answer B, answer C, and answer D. And this is where you change what the correct answers are for each game. If you want one of the answers to be correct, you'll change that to 1. If it's incorrect, you'll set it to 0. So right now we can see that answer A and B are both set to be correct, which is fine because a multiple response is set to 1. Now if you select multiple response and set it as 0, which means only one answer is correct, you want to be sure that only one of these four actions is assigned with 1 and the rest are assigned to 0. Otherwise the game will think that two of the actions are, or two of the answer options are correct but Captivate will only let the user select one of them, 
so it will be impossible for them to get the question right. Okay, right below that is a variable called answer choices. This is where you can change how many answer options actually show up on the screen, anywhere from one to four. All right, now right below that is another four different actions that are assigning variables called button labels. Now if we go back to the slide view, I can see that on each of these buttons, there's not an actual answer text, there's just a variable reference that's referencing BTN label. And in order to change what is going to show up for each of the questions, we just change that right here. Change that from literal, change this to answer one, and then answer two right there. So now when this slide starts, this action will fire and it will change the variable that's shown on the buttons to the answer options that you select in there. Okay, so that's all you have to edit on the setup question slide. We'll save that. Then after that, for each question, all you're going to have to worry about is editing the question text, then the correct feedback text, and the incorrect feedback text. And you want to be sure that you do that for all of the slides that are in your game. Earlier in the tutorial, I changed the number of questions from 5 to 10. So I want to make sure I modify those variables and those objects on each slide that's included from slide or from question 1 to question 10. All right, now the next slide you'll have to worry about modifying is the result slide, which is the final slide in the game. Now, if I go to the slide, I can see that those buttons are actually still visible right here. Even though I can't click on them, they're kind of obstructing my view and it makes it hard for me to edit. To change that, I'll just go up to slide three, the button slide. I can select all of these items, come down to the timeline and just select the eye icon on each of them so they're all hidden. And then once I do that, if I navigate back to the results page, I can see that they're gone. Then I can edit my feedback text as I need to. Okay, so that's how you edit the eLearning Brothers Captivate Game Templates.